It's a privilege and an honor to be before the living God and to be before the kingdom of the living God. Thank you to the Brother Rex for the scripture reading. The title of my message for this morning is the five four witnesses of Jesus. We were glorifying Jesus Christ right now uh, through the songs, prayers, and always at the end of the prayer we are glorifying Jesus, saying in the name of Jesus. And our prayer is direct to the Father. Now this morning, I love, I love to be reading the book of John, the Gospel of, of John. It's my favorite book. And when I prepare a lesson from the book of John, I'm so excited when I'm, I'm reading about the deity of Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Messiah. I'm so excited, really, believe me. So I, I really enjoy to read this book. I have read this book many times in Spanish, in English, no, in Chinese, because I don't know about Chinese, but I wish, but I have read it many times. So I decide to pick this lesson from this book. So I, I thought I'm going to be teaching about, about the book of John. And I start to prepare and to write it down. And this is going to be the lesson. The five, four witnesses of Jesus. John chapter 5, verse 31 and Verse 32, we're going to be using more verse than this one. But I decide just for the scripture reading, these two verse. Let's go with the introduction. Jesus said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. That's exactly right. I don't know about your profession, but if you start talking about yourself that you are so good, or you are so expert probably it's right, but why somebody or why the other people has to believe that? Why? It, it probably is true. If, if you ask me, honestly, if you ask me, are you a good painter? I'm going to respond to you, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm very confident about that, but the, the point is why you have to believe that? Why? So that with Jesus is very honest, and he's, he's saying the following, if I bear witness of myself, or testimony of myself, my witness is not true. Because it's easier to be talking. It's easier said than done. Everybody is probably is a good talker. But to practice the things is a different story. And like anyone else, it, was in, it wasn't enough for Jesus to simply claim things about himself. There had to be outside. Other people had to be saying about you, including Jesus. Other one. That's the reason that he, Jesus said, okay, if my words are not enough, I'm going to present you or give you five witnesses according to the law in the Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15 the Bible of the law require only two or three witnesses by the mouth of two or three witnesses the matter shall be established two or three but Jesus said Okay, I'm going, I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to give you five witnesses about me. They are going to be giving testimony about me or witnesses about me. More than two, more than three, more than enough. Jesus is saying this one to the Jews. But not only the ordinary Jews. These Jews were the leaders of Israel at this time. 
I'm going to present you five witnesses to all of you to persuade you that I am the Messiah, that I am the Christ. And he begins with the first one. He said, I'm going to give you the testimony of John the Baptist. All of you, as Christ and Pharisees and Sadducees, you know who the John the Baptist is. You know him. And you, all of you, you believe that John the Baptist is a prophet. Jesus was asking today, do you know him or do you don't, you don't know him? For sure, they respond, yes, we believe in John. We believe that John the Baptist is a prophet. We believe that John the Baptist is coming from God. Jesus said, this one is one of my witness. John the Baptist. This one that you call him a prophet is one of my witness. And Jesus said, there is another who testifies on me. You say that my words are not enough. Okay, that's fine. It's okay. What about this one? There is another one. I'm testifying about myself. That's what Jesus was telling today. Okay, but I got another one who testifies on me. And I know, Jesus is saying, I know, I believe that. I know that the testimony which he gives about me is true. I believe it. John came to prepare the way of the Messiah. And Jesus said, all the things that he's talking about me, all those things are true. If you are accepting John, you must accept me. If you believe, if we believe in God, we must to believe in his word, in the Bible. It, it, it is impossible to say or to believe I believe in God, I believe in the Son of God, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in the Bible. This is the same way people are saying, <clears throat> I'm a Christian, I believe in God, but I don't need to congregate, I don't need to be a church. There is a contradiction right here. It's something wrong. It's something that is not matching here. If you believe in John, you must believe in me. He was testifying, or he is testifying about me. And all things that he's saying are true. Remember the, that in certain occasion, all of these religious leaders asked to John, are you the Messiah? And John said, no, I'm not the Messiah. But he's coming behind me. Because they were seeking for the Messiah. Now the Messiah is among them, and they don't want to believe in him. And Jesus is saying to them, all right, I give you one witness, John the Baptist. What did John testify about Jesus? What? Let's see it. In John chapter 1, verse 29 and verse 34, John, John the Baptist said, Jesus is the Lamb of God. All of you, leaders of Israel, you know that in the Old Testament, for the forgiveness of your sins, the high priest brought to the holy or holy place one lamb every year in sacrifice for the remission of your sins. They knew that. A perfect lamb. Now, John is saying, or is testifying, that Jesus is the Lamb of God. That take away the sins of the wars, not once a year. No. More than that, Jesus is the perfect offering. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. 
forever. He's taking away the sins or the wars forever. That's what John testified. Jesus is the Lamb of God. What else? He, John said, <clears throat> Jesus is a man. A capital M. A man. A man who has a higher rank than other men. A higher rank than the angels. You know, some people said Jesus was an angel. I don't know, probably you have heard about this. Jesus was an angel. No, that's not true. That's a blasphemy. John is saying, he's testifying the truth. He's a man who has a higher rank than myself. That's what John is saying. A higher rank than all prophets. A higher rank than Moses, Elijah, Isaiah. And then John continued describing or testifying about Jesus. John said, he existed before me. John was almost about six months older than Jesus. They were cousins. He was six months older than Jesus. And John is saying, he existed before me. Because Jesus is God. He exists forever and ever. He existed before me. And John also said, the spirit I saw when the spirit or the heavenly father or God descended and remained and the spirit, he remained upon him, upon Jesus. I saw that. Two choice, a prophet, a king, a, a priest, when was chosen, this person was anointed with oil. That was the way. That was a, a saying that that person was a chosen for a service. For the whole country of Israel, for uh, the spiritual work, uh, or for the spiritual service for God. But John is saying that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended from heaven and was remained upon Jesus Christ, upon his head. The Holy Spirit took the form, or the bodily form, of a dove and remained upon the head of Jesus Christ. That was a signal that Jesus was the Christ. Or the Messiah. And John is giving, giving a testimony about this. I saw. I heard the voice. And I also saw that. After the flood. The father sang a dove. With, a, with an olive laugh. To give hope to Noah. And his family and to give hope to the all mankind. Now the Father is sending the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit remain upon the head of Jesus to give hope to the whole mankind. To give salvation. In other words, uh, John the Baptist is saying this is the Messiah. This is the Savior. There is no another one. There is hope in Him. And finally, John said, This is the Song of God. Song of God is the same, like to say, God is Song. It's the same 
expression. It's, it's exactly the same. John was saying, one prophet is saying, this is God. Accept him. Believe in him. Because this is God. Brothers and sisters, was this enough, this testimony, to believe it? Brother Mike is teaching something about the Bible, prepping a sermon, giving a lesson, and he's using the Bible. And he's, he was inviting us this morning, open or turn to your Bible and read with me. And then after to be reading all this scripture that he was appointing, we said, that's not true. Is that correct? No, we're going to say, no, we're wrong. John was giving this testimony. And these people were saying, that's not true. You are a prophet of God. You are coming from God, John. But all the things that you are saying are not true. How is possible this? But Jesus is saying, okay. What about the testimony of my works? I mentioned the testimony of my words, and you said, that's not true. Okay, I give you the testimony of John. You said, that's not true. What about my miracles, signs? Jesus said, I shall be performing miracle signs to persuade you that I am the Messiah. Not my words, but my deeds. Like I said before, somebody asked, Carlos, are you a good painter? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, absolutely. I'm a good painter. People is expecting to see my job. And after that, they're going to say, oh, it's right. It's good. Jesus is saying the same, okay? My deal, I'm going to show you my miracles, signs to persuade you. That's why Jesus he began to make miracles, to perform miracles, killing people. And the controversy right here in John chapter 5 begins because he healed a person. You, you can read it by yourself and your home in the ch chapter 5. In the beginning of chapter 5 is the context of all this discussion. Jesus, he healed a man that was Paralyzed for 38 years. This was the beginning of this controversy. It was on Sabbath. And they were start to complain, murmuring, it's not possible that this is the Son of God, that this is the Messiah, because he's breaking the Sabbath. It's not possible to believe in him that he's the son of God. He's claiming a witness regarding his identity and deity, but he's breaking the Sabbath. He's breaking the law. He's making miraculous signs and words, but these things are so simple because he, he he's just expressing compassion and mercy to simple and needy people. We want to see more than that. And we want a, a Messiah that express miraculous power, not in simple acts of compassion and mercy. No, we don't want that. We want to see, or we are looking for a Messiah to use miraculous power to bring military and political deliverance to Israel. We got a joke right now, the Roman joke, and we want a real Messiah that begin to destroy the Roman Empire. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers were everywhere in Jerusalem, in Israel, in the whole country, watching them to keep the order, to keep the submission, pay the taxes. 
We don't want troubles here. And they were ready to kill people. They continually were killing people. All those ones that start to reveal or to oppose to the Roman Empire, they start to kill all those kind of Jews. They consider them troubles men to the empire, to Caesar. And this Messiah is showing just gratitude, mercy, compassion, only for people that are sick, for people, needy people. We don't want a God like that. That's the same that the society is saying now. We don't want a Christ like that. You Christian, you are wasting your time talking about one Christ that is not repairing or fixing the war with many problems. But God, this is one God of love. He's saying love. We love. We can avoid all the problems that there are in the world right now. But we don't, we, we don't want to believe in love. We don't want to believe in the love of God. We don't care about that. We, we are trying to solve all the situation but ourselves. Inventing things, saying things, programs, etc., etc. Nothing, all those things is going to change this world. Never. Only the Messiah can do it. Only God can do it. Only the Son of God is able to do it. That was the reason he gave this testimony. The testimony of John, I got another one. And this testimony is greater. The testimony of my miracles sign is greater than the testimony of John. Because the testimony of John were only words. These are acts. These are works. I have a greater witness than John's. For the words which the Father has given me to finish, the every words that I do bear witness of me. That the Father has sent me. Has sent me. I am the Messiah. I'm coming from heaven. And they said, we don't believe that. Even seeing the words, even hearing, we don't want to believe. We don't want to believe that. Every single human being is able to believe in God. Everyone. The problem is, we don't want to believe in God. That's a different story. We don't want to recognize. It's not convenient sometimes. Because we believe in the existence of, of God, of one holy God. This God is telling us that we must to imitate him. That we need to change our way. And sometimes, or most of the time, we don't want to do that. We want to continue in our way. Then Jesus said, okay, I'm going to give you one more witness. The testimony of the Father. The law. You are respecting the law. You said that you respect the law. And the law said, by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every single matter shall be established. Okay, I'm going to present you one more. The testimony of the Father. The Father testified of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ is the center of the Old Testament and New Testament. All the prophets were talking about him. The kings were talking about Jesus Christ. All of them. The father was talking about the son. And then when John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ, the father gave testimony of the son in the New Testament. In Luke chapter 3, 
Verse 22, if you turn to your Bible, you can read it with me right now. And the Bible says, And the Holy Spirit descended upon King. That's what Luke is saying right here. The writer of this book of Luke was Luke. Luke is saying, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, upon Jesus, in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came out of heaven, and this voice says, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. The Father gave testimony of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is not the Messiah, so the Father, he was lying. He's a liar. And that should be a blasphemy. But the Father is the Father of truth. The only liar is the devil. He's the Father of life. But God, the Father, is the father of truth. And he gave testimony of his son, saying, this is my beloved son. This is the Messiah. This is the one that I sent to the earth to save the human being. And the father himself, that's what Jesus is saying, the father himself, who sent me, has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time. It's not possible. You are the leaders of Israel. The prophet heard the voice of my father. The priest heard the voice of my father. Some kings in the Old Testament heard the voice of my father. But you know. Why not? Because of your heart. You have neither heard his voice at any time. Because Jesus is saying, you don't deserve that. You are pretending that you are holy men, that you are leading Israel in the right direction, but that's not true. Brothers and sisters, there was a debate between Jesus and all these religious leaders of Israel. It's the same thing now. We hear some preachers of the Church of Christ, Defending the truth against false preachers that are twisting or changing the message of truth, that are a, a breaking the truth. That's what Jesus was it's, a, doing at this time right now in the first century. As testified, you have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seeing his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you. It is the reason. Because whom he sent, he you do not believe. That's the reason that it's impossible for you to hear the voice of the Father or to see his form. Because you don't want to accept me. I am the son of the father, and you, you don't want to accept me. In, in, in theory, these religious leaders in, in Jesus' days, uh, they love, in theory, they love and value the scriptures. They love and value the scriptures. I mean, the Old Testament. That was the only scripture that were revealed at that time. They study and memorize letter by letter the Old Testament. We ask ourselves, how many chapters and verses of the Bible have we memorized? How many? To be a Christian. No, it's not a requirement, Brother Carlos. It's not a requirement. That's true. But this religious leader, it was a requirement to memorize 
every single letter of the Old Testament to be a Pharisee, to be a scribe, or to be a Sadducee, to be a leader of Israel. Uh, leaders of the Eastwood Hill Church of Christ. We must study very hard the Bible. Very hard. Memorizing. We have to be prepared uh, to defend the truth. To be leading this local congregation right here in East Full Hill Church of Christ. Men of this local congregation, we must to study the Bible, love the Bible, memorize the Bible, to know the truth, to practice the truth, to defend the truth. They did all these things. But they read the scripture, no. Search for God, but to find arguments to support their own positions. That was the only purpose to be studying and reading the Old Testament of these religious leaders of Jesus' day. They did not really love God. They loved their own ideas about him. Don't get confused. Love God is one thing. Love or all ideas about God is a different story. People are saying God is everything. God is love. God is money. God is everything I have. The house is God. That's not true. That's not right. This is a wrong definition about the Lord. If we really love God, we really are going to love one another. If we really love God, we're going to love the scriptures. We're going to love our neighbors. Those religious leaders this time, they don't really love God. Jesus continued and he said, I'm going to give you one more witness. The testimony of the scriptures. The testimony of the Old Testament. That's all they had at that time. Now we have the Old Testament and New Testament. The Old Testament and New Testament are giving witness or testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying today, the testimony of the Old Testament is giving witness or testimony of me. You search the scripture. Oh, that's wonderful. Jesus is saying, oh, that's wonderful. That's so good. You search the scripture for in them, in the scripture, you think you have eternal life. Leaders of Israel, that's excellent. You are taking your time to be studying continually the scripture. And you are not only reading, you are searching, investigating, taking time. That's perfect. And this, Jesus said, are they which testify on me? Oh, the last part, they didn't like today. The last part of the verse, they didn't like it. The problem is that the verse, it didn't finish right here, where it says life. It didn't finish. It continued. Oh, you were, in, you were saying something good, Jesus. But when you said that those creatures, Testify about you, we don't believe that. Oh, Brother Carlos, oh, Brother Mike, oh, elders, when you are saying this, mm, we don't want to do that anymore. You were saying something good, but now you continue saying something that I don't like it. 
people is saying sometimes, or we are saying sometimes, I like this. What Jesus is saying about this. Huh? You like to wake up early, now at night 30, and to come right here without eating breakfast sometimes? Maybe we can say, oh yes, I love it, brother, because we have faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's wonderful. But what, what happens when we are very tired of working? On Saturday, we work about 10 hours or more, and we have to wake up anyway to come here, to be here. Ah, that was good when Brother Derek and the other and the rest of the elders said, well, oh, we're going to change. We're going to make shorter the lesson, the class. And we're going to make shorter my sermon. That's good. Everything we start thinking differently. And the last witness, the number five, is this one, Moses. Jesus is appealing now to Moses, to the prophet Moses, the testimony of Moses. Maybe with the testimony of Moses, I persuade you to believe in me. And Jesus start mentioned today, do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. Okay, I'm not going to kiss you. I'm not going to kiss you for the works that I perform. I'm not going to accuse you with that. I'm not going to accuse you with my words. There is who accuses you. And this one belongs to the law. That law that you are being, you have been memorizing. Moses, in whom you trust, you said that you trust in Moses. When I read all this uh, text, I thought, Jesus was so smart. He was using their own arguments in this debate. To persuade them. John the Baptist, you say he's a prophet. Moses, you respect Moses. He is going to accuse you. For if you believe Moses, you could believe me. For he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? In other words, his conclusion is, I can do anything for all of you. That's it. This is done. This is the end of the discussion. That's it. Brothers and sisters, there are people that is not going to believe in God. Don't worry about that. There is people that is not going to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Don't worry about that. Let's continue. Let's continue. Moses wrote about the Messiah. Yes, he wrote. For he wrote about me. That's what Jesus said. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. That's what Moses said. From your meat. From here, from Israel. From your brethren. King. You show here. The Old Testament is saying this. Now Moses said that. I am that one that Moses wrote about. I am the Messiah. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15. In conclusion. Jesus did not call these religious leaders to a new or different faith. He's calling for a different faith or a new religion. He called them to believe what Moses, what the scriptures, what his works, what John the Baptist, and what the Father testifies about him. If you are a visitor this morning, 
and you are agreeing with this lesson of this morning, I invite you to come to Jesus Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. We got five witnesses that we were studying this morning that testify that Jesus is the Savior. He's God, the Son. Today is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. You only need to repent of your sins, change your way, come to Jesus Christ, believing and accepting him as the Son of God, and to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. We got water here, and you shall be saved. After you are agreed with this invitation, please come forward after the invitation song.